Hello everybody, welcome back. Boss Poses here, Cody McIntyre. Today I'm going to be showing you how to combine Mixamo animations without the use of the very annoying NLA editor. I am one of those people that just struggle with the NLA editor and just can't get any project start to finish in that thing. It just takes way, way too long for me to be excited and have fun doing what I love, right? So I'm going to be showing you how you can do just that. So what we're actually going to do is start by going to Mixamo.com, getting some uh, FBX animation sets. So I already have some, but if you don't, please do that before we continue here. Now you're going to import your FBX animations, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is import my one jumping animation right here. So if I bring this back on the timeline, you see that he is moving. I'm actually just going to turn off the rendered mode here so we can get a little bit of performance. And as you see, he is playing just perfect okay so what we're gonna actually have to do is delete the x-axis and we're gonna have to delete the z motion of the the armature for us to be able to blend this in with another one properly okay so the first thing i'm actually going to do is just import another one that i want to blend into this so i'm going to go jumping over and i want that animation to play at the same time and as you see they both play but for the meantime we're actually just going to hide that one go into our one animation here Go over to this little stopwatch on the timeline, and then we're going to open the graph editor. It's this line that we're looking for right here. This is our Z motion, and we want to flatten this to zero. And what flattening that to zero is going to do is actually play the animation stationary. So in all Mixamo animations and all rigs made in Mixamo, you're going to have a hip bone. And this is going to be the uh, source of your root motion. So we always want to go into the hip bone. You want to find your Z location, if you notice that it did highlight all that line. And if you can't see the line, just press home on your keyboard and it'll make it to size. We're going to hit shift H and that's going to hide everything. So now that we have just our Z, we're going to come up to key next to normalize, snap to cursor value. And what cursor value is going to do is make all of the Z root motion at zero. So now our animation is playing stationary. This is just about good to go for blending. So the next thing we're going to actually do, so we're able to manually animate which direction he's going and how he's doing it. We're going to select the axis, x-axis, we're going to unhide it, we're going to go into here, press A to select all, and then delete that, right? Okay, so now that we have that, this character is really much, pretty much just good to go for now. So the next thing I'm going to do is unhide my other armature and hide this one just so you can have a better idea of what's going on. So if I leave the graph editor open and you just click the armature, everything's back to where we were. So again, we're going to select the hips. We're going to go down. We're going to find the Z location. We're going to press Shift H, home if you have to. And then we're going to go to key, snap to cursor value. And again, this is just going to make our animation play still. And to animate this manually, we're going to have to delete our X location. Select all, delete all of the X location. Okay, so now this should be good to blend in with the other armature. And we're going to be doing this in a really, really old-fashioned way. So we're actually just going to unhide that old armature we're going to take all of these keyframes right here we're going to copy it we're going to go over to this armature we're going to move up on the timeline and just paste it and as you see now that he's going to play the other cycle of the animation this one's more of a giant flip this one's a dive flip right so as you see this blends really damn well but you see we got a little bit of a hiccup coming here and we can fix that by normalizing later so now that we have this animation copied into our new armature, we can actually just delete this armature right here, okay? So now that we have this double animation, we're actually just going to come down into here and find out where these ski frames skipping are happening. So we want to highlight all of this. We just want to drag that down into there. See? Now we have a really good animation completely blended. So at right here is our blend point, 102 and 101. As you see, there is absolutely, it's perfect. It's almost perfect. And I don't understand why the NLA editor can't be this easy to add the armature to, but now you see that we're up to 220 frames with two separate things. So I'm going to go to playback, play uh, frame dropping. This just makes sure in my viewport render, all of the frames are going to be played at once. So if I play it back, we get the flip. It's going to jump again, and he's going to do the roll flip, which I think is absolutely phenomenal, right? So the next thing we're going to do is actually get a character onto this, right? So... You want to go to rococo.com, it's a motion capture website, and you want to download their free add-on for Blender called the Studio Live Blender plugin. It'll be right on their main page. And the only thing we're going to be using in this thing pretty much is the retargeting feature. So what that's going to allow us to do is uh, take our uh, Mixamo uh, mocap data and put it on basically any armature we can find. So we're actually going to go to source. We're going to click the source of this armature. 
we're going to go to target and find this dummy target here that I managed to download, which I really, really like for animating. And we want to make sure this uh, character is down here, maybe even a little bit smaller, because some parts do get messed up every single time you use this, unless it's perfect, but it's so much fun to correct it. And I'm going to be showing you after. So now that we have all that lined up, we're going to hit build bone list. And this is going to give us a biped bone list down here. This basically just, you know, automatically adds all the bones to that rig, right? So next thing we're going to do is we don't have to have auto scale on, but I'll let you read the little message if it pops up. This will create a source armature to fit the height of the tarmac ar armature. And both armatures have to be in T-pose for this to work correctly. So both of them are, are in T-pose, but what the auto scale is going to do is basically just give me the correct height and the foot level. So I'm just going to leave that on just for now sake, just to show you. That it does bind, but as I mentioned before, the arms will be a little bit janky, but that's a lot of fun to fix because we can actually just kind of customize the Mixamo animation. So now that we have that bound to it, we're pretty much good to go for editing on it. As you see, our new character has both of the animations and the roll, and he can roll back, jump up, jump forward. Now we actually don't even need this armature anymore. We just need our character, which is absolutely... Now here's the fun part, right? So... Now you're probably wondering, okay, now, well, how do I get the motion back into my character now that we combine both of the animations? It's as simple as literally just turning on the auto keyframe. I would give this a nudge right here because that is where it started. And now he's going to jump. So right when his feet lands, I'm going to just assume that he's landing here for video's sake. And as you see, we got the motion on our jump. And he's going to go up. Just for rough sake purposes and rough draft, we're going to go over. It's going to continue. We can even download the onion skin add-on that gives us uh, an onion skin for uh, 3D armatures and stuff like that. It is a blast to use and a lifesaver all at the same time. So now we got the animations right there. Now we're just individually going in and nudging in keyframes for the jump and uh, the second uh, motion right here. And as you see, I'm just keyframing them all individually. So... We're just going to go in and keep pushing him forward in whatever direction we want him to go. So he's going to go like that, bounce back, flip, bounce, back over, and then he's going to roll. So then we're going to push this a little bit forward, and then what we're going to do is just tweak the arms just a little bit, just to give it a good go. So yeah, there we go. We got our motion back and a combined Mixamo animation without the use of the NLA editor. Because that thing, I would still be trying to figure out how to combine these right now if the, I had to use the NLA. So now what we're going to do to correct the arm positions is actually we're just going to go into pose mode. We're going to select one of the bones and delete the bone. So that's all we really have to do there. Because the rest of the armature has the data. And what we're actually going to do is leave auto keyframe on and position the arms ourselves throughout the animation. So now as we run, as you see, his arm gets stuck in the back there. So we're just going to bring that out maybe tip it in a bit maybe have that like that look like he's flipping so he stretch his arms back maybe push them out Boom. We'll go in and we'll mess with the elbows in a minute. So we're going to probably have to do the whole arm, but as you see, this is pretty much how you correct the animation. You can make him draw a sword if you really wanted to as he's flipping. So I always go into my reco or my uh, Mixamo animations and I do it this way. So again, we're going to delete this on the forearm because the forearm just isn't that great. And then we're going to give it a little tilt on the forearm. And then we want the forearm to extend right about here. I could get a little bit of view for you guys. And then uh, put that there. And then what we can actually do is just float over here. We can fix the rotation of the wrist. The reason why I use this generic armature is just so that it pretty much hides the twisting of the arm if it did have clothes on it. So when it is corrected, I can just swap it to a much better one or just sculpt over. But as you see, boom, he's going to land. I want to make his arm come in a little bit more.
and you can actually come down up and over roll arm and lap up it goes arm back to the side and pretty much that's pretty much what you're going to do to edit the entire uh, armature so you can even go through all of the bones if you really wanted to and animate that and then pretty much just turn on your render mode if you want to see what it looks like it's going to look like something like that. I'll do a quick render and attach that to the post of the video so you can all see what this looks like completely rendered out in optics. So it's very much simple. And then I'm just going to be rendering with these sample rates right here. So I only render the video at about 35 samples, right? I don't need anything too special for that. And another thing I want to show you guys is a really cool camera trick. So if you go into navigation and set a hotkey for walk and fly to your mouse thumb button. So when I add a camera, okay. We're actually going to bring this down to zero. That way, if I add a keyframe to the camera, it'll be fine. We're actually going to hit the thumb button. If I had the hotkey uh, navigated, you'd be able to move around with the viewport like that and, uh, you know, position it with the mouse, kind of like playing a first-person shooter video game. We'll go over that tutorial and navigation in another video. But uh, for the meantime, I'm just going to go into my render. We're just going to turn off the crop view just so I can see where this camera even really is. I'm just going to make it a stationary camera from now until I rebind my hotkey. So if I go into uh, my render mode, and as you see, if I hit the fly and walk key, that's not working. I'm pretty sure it was the minus key, or it was one of these buttons on the keyboard that would allow fly, but what I'm actually gonna do, you probably can't see this window pop up, but I'm going into preferences. I'm gonna go to key map, and I'm at the top in the search bar, and I'm gonna type fly, and I'm gonna see the fly walk navigation, and then it's gonna be shift colon, so I'm just gonna make this mouse button four i'm going to go i'm going to press the uh, zero or insert on the num uh, key to go back into any default camera and when i hit the thumb button i will be able to point around like a first person shooter video game and i'll actually be able to animate the camera a lot better so now that i have the auto keyframe on we're just going to move the camera with the character it's going to land. We're just going to keep nudging it forward. It probably looks really bad like that. So I'm actually going to tilt it up like this. Back. And then he's up. So with the camera animated, it looks like this. We can actually probably bring this a little bit closer. It'll probably give us a little bit more of a cinematic vibe to it. But we have a one on zero, so we're going to delete this. And as you see, it flips. What we can actually do is delete these camera keyframes here. We can actually kind of turn the camera like this. We can keep nudging it if we really wanted to. As you see, we get a good flip. Whoa. And we didn't animate the end of that. That's why he's still playing in position right here. It's because we didn't finish the keyframing on his position. So. We're actually going to do that and just kind of look down, and then we have that. And that's pretty much how you combine the Mixamo animations. So I'm going to get this ready for a render, and I'm going to upload the video for you guys. And, uh, yeah, check it out on the post. This is how you combine Mixamo animations without the use of the NLA editor. I hope you all found this useful. Please do like and subscribe my Facebook page, at Boss Poses 3D. I am on CG Trader Art Station, Cults 3D Sketch Fab, pretty much every 3D printing website, animation website. ArtStation is uh, where it's at. Yeah, I do commission work, so if you guys ever need promos, you ever need animations, STLs, photo to STL, stuff like that, I can definitely help you. Just please shoot me a message. And yes, and all of you, please just enjoy your day. Have a good one. Take care.